Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and today I'm going to present the actual worst Sega Mega Drive game ever made and I've got factual research to back that claim up. The Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis if you enjoy calling it the wrong name, had many great games, also had many rubbish games, but of all the rubbish games, which one was the worst? Well, for a start, I don't think we should judge these games by today's standards. We need to judge them by the standards of their day. I used to love Virtua Fighter on the Sega Saturn, and I played that to death in 1995, but because I'm so used to the modern versions like Virtua Fighter 5, trying to play the original game is almost impossible. The game game feels so slow and crap despite the fact I know I didn't feel this way about it back when it was new. So we need to judge Mega Drive games by the standards of their day. We need to find a game that even at the time it was deemed to be absolutely shit. So that means going back through the archives and digging out some old magazines of the Mega Drive era. The UK Sega magazine, Sega Pro, was a pretty good magazine. Not as good as the official Sega magazine, but how could it be? That magazine was written and edited by Richard Ledbetter, the same Richard Ledbetter who runs Digital Foundry now. But anyway, Sega Pro was still a decent magazine, and they used to print a section in the magazine where they'd do short reviews of almost every game on the Mega Drive. Fair scores too. 60 to 70% ratings were given to games that were above average, and anything above that was considered a great game. Some very poor games getting around the 20%, so you know they're pretty bad. But one game was so shit that Sega Pro straight up gave it a 0% rating and called it the worst game on the system. That game is Curse. A game so awful, it got the lowest possible review score. And it got this in 1993. So the question now becomes, was this score justified? Or was the magazine writer just having a bad day and took its frustrations out on this poor game? No, this is utter garbage. So even though the title screen looks decent enough, once you actually get into level one of the game, it falls apart pretty quickly. So the biggest flaw is exposed right away, and that's the controls. It's so slow and sluggish to move your ship, and it makes flying around very unenjoyable. This turns from annoying to almost game-breaking when the screen suddenly fills up with shit everywhere. By the time you reach level four, the game is basically basically unplayable. But I'm getting ahead of myself and level 1 still has plenty of problems. Notice this tree and look at the speed it's scrolling. Now this tree is actually a mid-ground image and it's not affecting gameplay at all. But just after it and scrolling at the same speed and using the same colour palette is this plant thing. This is an obstacle, so if you touch it, you die. Who the fuck designs foreground and mid-ground items with the same design and colours? It's one of the most basic concepts there is in art. And this game has managed to get that wrong in the first minute. You can also die for no reason. So it's this tree again, and you can see my shots are going past it and hitting enemies. The next tree thing, you can clearly see it's stopping my shots from getting past, which is how you can figure out what's a foreground object and what's not in this game. But anyway, back to the first tree again, and let's just watch this in slow motion. What the fuck killed me? Both me and the enemies can shoot past the tree, so I'm sure it's not that. Plus, when I respawn, I can just fly right past it. So what the fuck actually killed me? I've slowed down to a frame-by-frame -frame playback, and I still can't work out what took me down. I'm sure this game just makes it up as it goes along. Like the attack pattern of these Star Wars knockoff things. How they try to engage you is an absolute fucking lottery. It's not like other shoot 'em ups where you have different enemy types and different styles, and you know the attack pattern by the colour and appearance of what you're shooting at. This game just keeps recycling the same graphics over and over again. All of this crap happens and then it's the boss. Now considering we fought different types of robots, spaceships and alien bio creatures, what do you think the boss will be? A big robot? A big spaceship? Maybe some sort of alien thing? Is it 
birds. What sort of game design is this? Now, just when you thought the game had hit rock bottom, it manages to do something else to make it worse. So getting here to level two is a monumental task because your ship moves so jerky and slowly, even while the game is filling the screen with fast moving objects that saturate the screen in projectiles. But what does this game give you? Three lives and no continues. That's right, this barely functioning game gives you just three lives before the game over screen. But I can still show you the late levels because there's a level select cheat. So here on level two, it starts off easy enough. Then you get this midway boss to deal with, but after you dealt with him, the rest of the level is unplayable. You have these asteroids coming towards you. The green ones you can blow up, the red ones you can't. So when the red ones appear, it also brings in these robot dickheads that shoot rings at you. And these things just jizz rings everywhere, filling up the entire screen. Level three is probably the most well-designed stage in the game because you can see the way you should be taking the enemies down. The problem is your ship is just not fast enough. It's like the level designer expected the player's ship to control a lot better than it actually did. But when they found out it didn't control how they expected, the level designer just went, fuck it, I'm not changing it now. So this just leaves us with the final level, level four. Yes, thankfully, there are only four levels in this game. It starts off with you thinking you'll be able to take it on and then it just goes berserk and fills the screen up again with a huge amount of projectiles that are simply unavoidable. I mean, look at all this shit. It's fucking ridiculous. How are you ever meant to get through this mess? It just stinks to me like a purposely broken game as the title only has four levels. So as a way to mask how short the game is, they made the last level pretty much impossible. But anyway, there we have it. The worst game ever created for the Sega Mega Drive. Not just bad by today's standards, but awful by the standards of the early 90s too. That's it, Abba. <laughs>